Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Now we have uh, come to the last session of the day, but very important, the structural and peripheral intervention. Uh, first, I'd like to invite my chairs for the session. Uh, Professor Tariq Ashraf Saab. Sir, please. Professor Tariq Ashraf Saab. Sir. Dr. Suhail Khan. Professor Ambar Malik. Dr. Jabbar Ali. Dr. Muhammad Qazi Tufail. Dr. Hafsa Shahid, Dr. Salia Harun, Dr. Vakas Mazhar, Professor Chadat, sir, please, take the seat. Now, our first speaker is Dr. Badul Ahad Gil from CPIC Multan. He is talking on a very important topic of tips and tricks for transeptal puncture. Dr. Badul Ahad Gil. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So, it's uh, Topic is very simple, very simple to perform basically and I think very difficult to explain. Anyhow, at the end of the discussion, hopefully the attendees would be able to identify the instruments required for septal puncture, mark the landmarks for transseptal puncture, understand the entire procedure of this. And if we are, you are teaching today what you were teaching five years ago, either the field is dead or you are dead. The topic is very old, but we'll try to, to explain it in, in a different way, in a new way, inshallah. With the passage of time, the indications of transseptal puncture has also evolved. Now PTMC, EP studies, LA appendage closure, mitra clip, AF ablation, and TAVI as well. What is the objective of transeptal puncture? Basically, it's the safe and effective delivery of catheterization e equipment from RA into the left heart. The instruments for transeptal puncture I have shown here is like Mullen's sheath, dilator, broken bow, this is the puncture needle. These are the instruments required for... Sorry. Yes. So method for transeptal puncture, two uh, basically well-known methods, Enoy and Hungs. What we focus on, what we perform basically here, what we are training is the Enoy's method. M my discussion here would be on the Enoy's method as well. So a brief description of the anatomy of the atrial septum here. F just to identify the aorta, which is the upper border, and then fossa valis, and then the tricuspid valve. So this is basically the anatomy of, of the internal atrial septum for, for which we are working on and we have to take it in mind. Again, there are four important landmarks which we have to take into our mind before we go for the puncture. This is, uh, first of all, is right coronary sinus, which is basically the upper end of tricuspid well, vertical midline, horizontal M line, and puncture P points. These last three are imaginary lines, basically. So how to identify this on the angiogram, the upper border of the tricuspid valve? From the first, on the left side, it's very clear the pigtail is placed in the right coronary sinus. And basically it is marking the upper end of the tricuspid valve. So the, at the, through this we identify the upper end of the tricuspid valve. So this is the horizontal M line. First of all, I would like to say that for the, for the trainees, for the new, new, new uh, uh, operators, this, identify it in RAO view. Basically, we do an LV angiogram in RAO view. We identify LVOT, and from the center of this LVOT, we draw an imaginary line, the horizontal M line. This is drawn in RAO view. So, we mark it through the 10th vertebra, through the distance of the 10th vertebra, either say one and a half disc above or one and a half disc below, the T10 vertebra is the identifying mark for this uh, horizontal M line. Then the vertical midline. The horizontal M line was in uh, RA view. This is in the frontal view. From the base of the pigtail catheter to the extreme right border of the heart. In normal, this is formed by uh, RA. But in mitral stenosis, this is formed by LA. Through this horizontal line from the center of it will mark another imaginary line, the vertical uh, midline. 
Now, keeping in mind these two lines, and in our, we are working in frontal view, AP view, and we have seen from the, uh, this RO view, the horizontal M line, in relation to T10 vertebra. So we'll identify the puncture P point where this horizontal M line transects the vertical midline. This is our ideal puncture P point, about two to 2.5 centimeter area is the puncture P point. Steps, vascular access, both femoral artery and vein. Again, the pigtail into, pigtail, as I've already told, to identify the right coronary sinus. And doing the LV angiogram, going into the SVC, innominate vein, and then coming down on it. Now, while we are coming down, we will see from, from SVC to RA, we have to identify the aortic root, and then the limbic region is the fossa valis. The first diagram I have shown, so we have to keep in our mind this view, and we are doing this in the uh, AP view, the frontal view. And this is the staircase movement. Shaw et al. described the three dips, the first dip, the second dip, and the third dip. A brief description of this puncture needle. The hub uh, we have, actually the needle is then, we have to rotate this needle from three to four uh, while we are moving down for, uh, to identify the puncture P point. As I've explained, for needle orientation, in normal size LA or slightly dilated, four to five o'clock position is good. Moderately large, five o'clock position and extreme large, six o'clock position will be good for, for the puncture. Okay, after identifying the, uh, this uh, puncture P point, we are working in the AP view on the left diagram. We have identified the transaction of horizontal M and vertical midline what we do here, there are different methods, some people do in RA view, but what we do, we do in the left lateral view. We, we inject some dye, make a culvinar, identify the septum. This should be midway between the pigtail and the vertebra. And then we do the puncture here. We enter into the LA. We can confirm in the different views, like on the left side, we'll see that in 30 RAO, the interlateral septum is generally seen and face. Therefore, the needle should look away from the operator. In the lateral view, the needle should be facing posteriorly towards the spine and should be between halfway from pigtail to spine. As I told, after confirmation, we'll push the system, uh, uh, I have, uh, leading by the puncture needle into the LA, we'll give some dye and confirm our puncture. It can be confirmed by the pressure tracing attached to the uh, puncture needle by the change in the pressure tracing while entering into the LA from RA into the LA. We'll do the allegram, we'll see the puncture site, and then we'll put the wire in the, uh, through this uh, puncture needle and replay and the di uh, dilator to dilate the LA septum. Thank you very much.